right guys how's it going welcome back so today i'm in a chrysler pt cruiser this is a car that's been the butt of jokes the laughing stock unanimously detested since its conception it was universally panned and eventually chrysler got the message and stopped making it all together it was unloved by pretty much everybody doug demuro even ran over one once in a hummer however today i'm here to fight its corner because and i've got to try and say this with a straight face I think it's about time we started to show the PT Cruiser some love and some respect. Seriously. Before we continue, I must admit that I have actually owned a PT Cruiser myself as my own personal car. It was back when I was 18 and I was a little bit obsessed with American things. I've since learnt the error of my ways. But yeah, mine was a 2001 2 litre petrol manual. If anyone's ever driven one of those early manual PTs, you got a big long gear stick and it was sort of... It was a bit like potluck, you never really knew which gear you were going to get. So I was 18, I had surfer style hair like Owen Wilson, and what I really wanted was an old Ford Bronco. But because I couldn't afford one, what I ended up with was a early PT. In fact, that was the first car that I ever bought and sold for a profit, and got me into this whole buying and selling car business. So it's got a lot to answer for. I could have had a proper career in a proper profession, rather than a used car salesman. But anyway, that's a story for another day. So, back to the PT. If you're an American watching this, you'll laugh because it's hardly an American thoroughbred. But here in Europe, if you wanted a slice of Americana, this was pretty much it. So in America, they sold well over a million of these things. In fact, that number's probably closer to two million. And they were mainly sold to Avis and Alamo. But here in Europe, they were mainly bought by, well, by young losers like me, who wanted a slice of the American dream. What we really wanted was an old V8 Mustang or an International Scout. But as I say, this was pretty much as good as it got. You could buy one of these and drive down the M66, and with a bit of imagination, you could be on Route 66. I've always quite liked the retro styling. Most people hate it. A lot of people think that it looks like a hearse, but I disagree. It sort of looks a little bit like a hot rod. They took some styling cues from the Plymouth Prowler. I quite like it. Don't forget, especially here in Europe, where most people were running around in Mark IV Golfs, and Mark 1 or Mark 2 focuses. This just looks a little bit different and I like that. I quite like anything that's a little bit different, a little bit unusual, and the PT is certainly that. It's quirky, it's unlike any other car on the road, and you jump in a Golf or a Focus or an Astra, and they're all the same. And this isn't, this is, this is, well, it's weird, basically. But I quite, I quite like that. I like that it doesn't take itself too seriously. Okay, so the interior is definitely not short of cheap plastic, but I'll quickly gloss over that. I quite like the other little attention to detail bits. I like the clock. I mean, look at the gear lever. It's a work of art. They could have just put a regular old cheap plastic looking gear lever, but they didn't. They put this little retro thing in. I like that. But what you get with the interior of the PT is lots of legroom, plenty of headroom. You sit up a little bit higher than a goal for a Focus. Also, the visibility is superb. It's like sitting in a fish tank. The boot's very big and you get this um, the shelf in there as well that actually can take the weight, unlike most parcel shelves, they'll actually take the weight of some boxes. Most parcel shelves in European cars wouldn't take the weight of a helium balloon. So I've got a 2.4 litre four-cylinder petrol and it's front wheel drive. It produces 140 horsepower, which sounds like plenty, but it never really feels quick. You've got traction control too, but Honestly, I don't know why they bothered fitting that. It certainly never feels like you would need traction control. So, although it's not quick, it's got a top speed of 106 miles per hour. It's very smooth, actually. And yeah, when you kick down, the only noticeable thing that happens is it gets louder. You don't actually move any quicker. Rear leg room's excellent too, and even the middle seat's quite roomy. Now today, I'm in a limited model which is the top spec. So I've got heated seats, aircon, uh, power windows, power locks, remote central locking, folding mirrors, pretty much everything you'd hope for. I've got full leather interior as well, but I don't think any animals were hurt in the making of this leather. It's probably vinyl or leatherette or something because it doesn't feel the best quality. Although this car's now 14 years old and it hasn't ripped or anything on the bolster like most Mercedes do with their Artico trim or whatever it's called. They are such good value for money, these cars, too. 
you can fold down the rear seats and with the rear seats folded you get more room in the back there than a Transit Connect it's unbelievable the one I had 10 or 12 years ago was a 2 litre petrol this is the 2.4 they also did a 2.2 litre diesel which was a Mercedes diesel I believe which was pretty good if you wanted the extra economy this 2.4 even with an auto box will still do 25 miles per gallon round town and 35 on a run so it's still quite cheap to live with but be careful if you're buying one because this, this model I'm in today is a late 2005 on a 55 had it been about 3 months younger then it would have fallen into the highest tax bracket 550 quid a year luckily this hasn't, this is only 320 I think so yeah that's something to, um, to watch out for the gearbox is quite smooth what's funny is that 20 years ago when Chrysler were thinking of making this car the people in the boardrooms must have looked to Europe and realised how popular the Focus and the Golf were and thought yeah we need a piece of that action and then what they gave us is this yes it does have a hatchback but that's where the similarities with the Golf end so in terms of what it's like to drive you get no feel through the steering wheel it's very vague for some reason they've made the steering wheel a metre wide in diameter you definitely get the impression that it was made for American grid network roads rather than twisty European roads you can't throw it into corners like you can with a Focus so it's not much fun to drive in fact you do find yourself grinning while you're driving it but that's not because of the actual drive that's because of what it is it's a bit like a smart car nobody that's ever driven a smart car actually enjoys driving a smart car the whole hilarity comes from actually being in one and then catching your reflection in a shop window and then questioning your life choices you'll get what I mean if you've uh, if you've driven one so on to reliability I never had any issues with my 2 litre the 2.2 diesel was a Mercedes unit so that's pretty bulletproof the early 2.4 suffered from head gaskets but that was later improved many years ago I recommended a friend of mine get one of these and she had nothing but trouble with it the head gasket went water pump went loads of things went wrong with it I remember driving back from Las Vegas back to LA and it was overheating so what should be a, a four-hour journey took twice that because I had to keep pulling over I was driving through Death Valley with the heater on full just to try and keep the gauge down but it turned out to be quite a funny trip in the end but that was the thing had she bought a Toyota Corolla and done it in a boring three hours 50 minutes with no hiccups I wouldn't now be talking about that journey I'm not saying buy something that's unreliable just so you can talk about it in years to come but I don't know what I'm saying actually anyway if it's been maintained well you should be okay so this particular one that I'm in is a late 2005 it's only had one owner from new and it's done just 50,000 miles it's been serviced every year by the main dealer in fact when you look in the service book they've run out of areas to stamp so the last four years have just been stamped anywhere I think if everybody looked after the cars like this the RAC would go bust so if you're looking for one here in England they're becoming rare trust me they are in fact if you have a quick look on Autotrader there are more Ferrari 599s for sale in the UK than PT Cruisers and as they age and get scrapped and crushed they'll only become rarer I'd recommend going for a facelift model like this because they're a little bit more modern and easier to live with if you go for an early model make sure it's had its head gasket done or make sure there's no mayonnaise under the filler cap but the chances are they're that old now it's probably been done it's like buying an old K-series um, Freelander or MG they're that old now somebody will have replaced the head gasket before I went out today and did this video I read lots of owners reviews and they're surprisingly well regarded by their owners I was expecting them to have been slated and slated and they weren't Every, in fact everyone I read was positive parts are cheap enough and readily available and there's an owners club too so if you don't want a boring Astra or Focus or Golf why not get one of these it will put a smile on your face I guarantee it and also mark my words in the near future they will become collectible this, the Crossfire, they're worth buying and sticking away in your garage. Honestly, don't laugh. Being serious. I can't ever imagine the Mark IV Golf becoming collectible. That was just a tool to do a job. But this certainly will. It's quirky and characterful. And I like it. 
And that's the thing with PTs, you either love them or hate them. So thank you once again for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. Uh, any questions, leave them below in the comments and I'll do my best to get back to you. Cheers guys, I'll see you next time.